OK, um, huge debate to be had on this one, isn't there? So let's see what... Well, I've got a great panel for you today. Uh, what my panel make is I'm joined by former leader of UKIP, Henry Bolton, and co-founder of Navarra Media, Aaron Bassani. Thank you very much for joining me this afternoon, mm. gentlemen. Happy Sunday afternoon to you. You too. So glad to you. Now, this is a huge debate to be had. A lot of things moved very fast yesterday. We had, I, I have to admit, the most animated I've seen Sadiq Khan felt really passionately about what he was saying quite mm -hmm. clearly. Um, and, uh, and then uh, almost immediately after in the afternoon, we had Lee Anderson being suspended. Um, and I'm going to come to you first on this one. What do you make of developments over the past few days? Well, I, I generally don't like MPs losing the whip um, because I think ultimately they're representatives for 70,000 odd people. Mm. And I don't like centralised power with the party leaders. However, what he said was... Outrageous. Um, and if there was a Labour politician who said that a Conservative mayor like Andy Street in the West Midlands was controlled by radical Jews, I think people would understand that as quite straightforwardly racist. Um, with these kinds of topics, in particular, politicians need to be clear um, and thoughtful with their words. I would have a lower threshold for members of the public, but with politicians, mm -hmm. we should have quite a high threshold. And I think he failed to meet that threshold. He could have apologised and said that. He's chosen not to. Uh, and I think as well, one more variable is that he's going to lose his seat at the next election in all likelihood. So I was surprised to hear from uh, that gentleman just then that actually in all likelihood he will return to the fold. I think there are high incentives for him to join reform or stand as an independent. Not that he will, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's as implausible as, as was being made out there. OK, uh, that, that was Peter Spencer, a former Sky political correspondent. Um, coming to you on this one, Henry, mm -hmm. I mean, do you think Lee Anderson... Was it was right that he was suspended for what he said? Uh, that's a matter for the Conservative Party. And I, I actually tried to join the Conservative Party and they said that I'd, I'd be a troublemaker um, because I, I'm, I've got a high profile. Um, what they don't There's want... There's quite a lot of them already there, though, isn't there? Yeah, there, there, there are, there are. Um, but there, are, um, uh, there is a fear in the Conservative Party that seems to be increasing of people speaking out. And what uh, I, I would... Uh, I'd, uh, echo the words just said that actually politicians need to be thoughtful about the language that they use. Of course they do. However, we should not just leave it at that because Lee Anderson is reflecting an increasing f sense of concern across society. And I'm not talking about extremists. I'm not talking about people on the far right. I'm talking about sort of generally small C conservative people who are quite fairly humble in their life. They just get on with it. Mm. But they are massively concerned at what they see. And, you know, the comments about Sadiq Khan. Sadiq Khan has embarked on, upon a series of, of policies and decisions that actually appear... He needs to be careful if this is wrong because it is the perception that he is creating and anybody who says then it's not is in denial or has got their own agenda. But he is he's seemingly pursuing a series of, uh, of decisions and policies that uh, are removing or overwhelming the traditional character and customs and history of Lo the City of London. And he's got to remember the City of London is the capital city of the United Kingdom, not just his town. And, you know, the renaming of rail, uh, railway lines and, and so on, um, the, the issue over the statue in the, on the fourth plinth oh, yes, in, in yeah. Trafalgar Square. These sort of things send the message to, if you like, the more traditional English white community I, I was that going... he wants to suppress their culture. Henry, I Isn't think that's it... a really interesting point you've just made there. I mean, uh, people, like, viewers are getting in touch. It, GB views at GB News, please do get in touch. You already are. This is a subject that's very close to all your hearts. Robert has said, uh, um, uh, yet another MP removed from the Tory party for telling the truth, echoing mm. what you're saying. There, there does appear to be, Aaron, out there, a, a, a silent majority who as Henry said, they're, they're not racist, but they are concerned about how they perceive things to be going. One example being the beaming of the from the river to the sea on Big Ben and nothing. I know I know the, the tower isn't called Big Ben. That's the bell. But mm. on, on the tower um, and nothing was done about that. So there is that perception that people are frightened to speak out. And a lot of people already getting in touch saying Lee Anderson was echoing what I think. What do you make of that? Elizabeth Tower. It's Elizabeth Tower. Tower. Yeah, a shorthand. Uh, OK, whatever. Um, what I would say is... Look, Although, you... if Sadiq has his hands, it would probably be changed. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Maybe Martin Luther King Tower. Um, what I would say is, if you want to criticise Sadiq Khan for being a liberal, 
by all means do that. I think he's a vanilla, identikit, liberal... Yeah, or knife crime, or ruining TfL, etc. Et well, but, well you, can, you can have that point of There's view. That's lots of criticism. That's fine. You can have that on new layers or whatever. Yeah. For instance, his position on LGBT rights, he's clearly not an Islamist. He's very much, to me, an identical vanilla liberal centre-left politician who happens to be a Muslim. And I think, actually, when if Lee Anderson thinks about it, if Henry thinks about it, they probably agree with that. So if you want to criticise him for that, by all means do, or the renaming of the various train lines, etc., please, go ahead. I, but he's not an Islamist. I, 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 you said, it's I just think simply about it. I think inaccurate. about it a great deal, a great deal. Um, I spend most of my time thinking about these sort of things, as you probably do. Um, we come to different conclusions. But the thing is that when you combine his policies with the behaviour of the Metropolitan Police with regards to the Palestinian protests, um, with the, uh, the threats and the intimidation of members of Parliament, direct or indirect, um, he is in a position uh, as the mayor of London to speak out against these things. And when he says London was built by immigrants, well, uh, I mean, if he goes back about 2,000 years, yes, I I'll, I'll give him that. <laughs> but actually, that's not the case. Uh, you know, if you look at, l at the profile, the demographic profile of London, as it was uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, it was very different. And London became the world's capital built by British people, not the immigrant community. And unfortunately, Henry, we're running out yeah. of time, so we have to move on at the moment. Um, right, um, and but because we've mentioned the election, here are the candidates standing in the Rochdale by-election. Um, Azair Ali, Labour, Mark Coleman, Independent, Simon Danchak, Reform UK, Ian Donaldson, Liberal Democrat, Paul Ellison, Conservative, George Galloway, Workers' Party of Britain, Michael Howarth, Independent, William Howarth, Independent, Guy Otten, Green Party... Ravin Rodent Subortner, official monster raving, Looney Party, and David Tully, Independent.